to another episode of ThinkTech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture, broadcasting live from the opposite ends of the world, we can say. Me here in uh, Munich, Germany, and uh, today I'm happy to say that our guest will be our CEO, Jay Fidel. Hi, Jay. Hi, Martin. Nice to join you today. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Let's jump right in and get up the first page here because the the last four shows, we have been making the case that there is actually a built environment that is as beautiful as our most beautiful natural environment on our islands of Hawaii. And that is from the past. And there's the Conrad Hilton, uh, the big hotel guy, right, has started his career of tropical resorts in Hawaii with the Kahala Hilton. So we were talking about that. And that is even attracting Hollywood attention. Eric Bricker, who's a Hollywood producer, who is just about to launch his current movie, which is about the uh, classic airstreams. So these tin cans that people, you know, like to move around in the country, they're not allowed so much on our islands, but elsewhere. But before that, he had made a movie about one of the most iconic architectural photographers, Julius Schulman. And the next movie he will do about Edward Killingsworth, who is the architect of many spectacular projects from mid-century that we're blessed to have on our our islands. And you see on the right side, uh, two projects at the bottom that Ed wasn't able to accomplish, and they're inclusive projects. One is a little small house that you see in the interior picture, and the other one is more exciting, is at the bottom is courtyard houses that he was suggesting for the favelas in South America. And the most iconic house from when Ed started his career were the case study houses, which got generations of German architects and others all over the world decided that although maybe Europeans had invented modernism, but Americans have brought it to a way more enjoyable uh, level. And the most iconic house of that time is the case study house number 22 that Eric chose for his that movie, which you see at the very uh, middle on the left. And below that, you see a project that the architect, that one, Pierre Koenig, wasn't able to accomplish either, which is basically housing for the Native American indigenous uh, um, population. Both these architects tragically ended up making exclusive architecture, which is beautiful. Don't get me wrong on that one. But they both very much regretted that they weren't able to serve the underserved. And that's what we want to talk about today, Jay, right? Yeah, okay, but I want to mention when you talk about uh, the Hilton, I want to mention that, um, you know, talking about the the, the cargo configurations uh, using containers and all that, and the step back thing you know, out of out of Mayan architecture, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess you're going to want to talk about that, but it yeah. brings to mind the Hilton Hotel in Kona, I, I don't yeah. think it's there anymore. I'm not sure. I've been there in a while. But this was just south of Kona Town on the water. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And it was the same. It just occurred to me. It was the same kind of thing. It was open. Mm-hmm. It was stepped back. It was uh, yeah. kind of a concrete structure, but an open concrete structure. And yeah, it was yeah. really beautiful and, and unusual. And I think it achieved a lot of architectural value of uh, the kind you know you and I were talking about the last time we talked about using containers. Um, yeah, yeah. It, look, it looked like the mock-ups that you designed and it only occurs to me now. So that's just another example, Martin, and I and I hope that you can take a look at that sometime and see if you agree with uh, me. No, you're right, you're right. I, I recall it, you're absolutely right. Let's go to the next slide and share something that you have poked me with, Jay. And that is, you know, the buzzword of affordable housing. And you were sending me an article that was featuring the project that we see at the top right, which is a project that is, you know, supposed to be in Kailua on the other side of our island of Oahu. And you were bouncing that off me and you basically said, well, how do you like that? And uh, we had this discussion and I said, no, I don't like it because it's, and just this morning, our, you know, exotic escapism expert, Suzanne, told me, you know, it just looks like what we see when we look out of our window, which you see at the very top left, with our 25 year young micro compact French car, the building in the back 
doesn't it look like what you see on the right, which they project for Kailua? Well, the difference is I'm having 55 degrees now, drizzling rain, and it is summer. In the winter, I'm going to have 20 below, and I need these walls to, to stay warm. We don't need that. So that's why I call what we see at the very top invasive and inappropriate. And it's also going to be fairly expensive because it's going to be built in a conventional way where you know you a lot of people and you know you have a lot of hours and that adds up so that that is why and so what you already said today we want to look into can we do this better and we're going to look into what you see at the bottom which i call the alchemist chamber which is my office up at uh and you see all these artifacts of exploration uh, if we can do things better so let's jump to the next slide and share with the audience jay um what we've been talking about in the review some weeks ago where the emerging generation has had pushed this idea that I had uh, to uh, to a more developed level, and this is the initial idea we call the CCCs, cargo courtyard cabanas, and it's based on the all-American capitalist invention of buying one and getting one free. Right, that's as American as you can get. So uh, what you do is you space the containers out by their width of eight feet and you automatically get a courtyard for free. So a container is 8, 40 by 8, so 320 of enclosed space, and then you cut out the side of the container so you get the same 320 as a courtyard for free. That makes you 640. And the provocative thing is that the raw material construction costs going to be $3,000 because that's roughly what a, what a used shipping container costs. So how does that sound? Well, we were talking before the show about, um, you know, I mean, the cost sounds terrific, but there's something else, too, that you achieve with these containers. We were talking before the show about the notion of uh, trying, to be, uh, trying to be attractive to uh, people who otherwise could not afford housing at all. Um, and you want to get them in there. You want to encourage them to come in. You don't want to make a Chicago complex, a Chicago, um, you know, uh, ghetto out of it. Um, so, you know, what do you do? Well, you, you have this, um, forgive my expression, but faux art, faux yeah. art. So, so the individual says, you know, that may be cheap materials and it may be very, you know, uh, efficient and everything, uh, but it's, mm -hmm. it looks, looks pretty nice. It makes me feel like I'm living in an art, an art experience um, mm -hmm. or even an upper, an upper class experience because it, it's so mm -hmm. kooky. Um, and I yeah. think that's one way of bringing people in. So aside from the cheap uh, aspect, I think it's, it's magnetic, attractive, welcoming. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next slide for that, Jay, um, here. And, you know, to sort of cover this a little bit, uh, this is actually, uh, I learned a lesson very early in my career that um, architects, uh, can't know any everything anymore these days. Everything is so complex, but you need to know who knows. And I, you know, I'll probably get ousted by my department, but for the longest time, you know that I've been saying that actually the engineers in many cases have been the better architects. You actually had my boss, our provost, Michael Bruno, as your guest a couple of weeks ago to report. Michael is an engineer. And so here at the very left here, you see Ian Robertson, who is a structural engineer up at UH. And we and Bill Chapman, our dean, were sitting down here with one of our emerging talents and thinking, so how can we push this sort of cabana thing that is one story and that way it will be sprawl. And if you, know, if you do it as an interim solution, it might be okay, but otherwise we can't waste any more land on the island we got to keep the country country. In order to do that, we got to make the city a city. And so we were thinking, what about if we stack them? And if we get to the next slide, this is what almost automatically came out of that, is that sketch down there uh, that, that I did, that you end up automatically with cigarettes. And that's not because of the of Beaux Arts kind of beautifying idea. I think there's a lot of BS in Beaux Arts, which engineers don't get caught up in, but we architects, unfortunately. The reason why this is stepping down is not because of some romantic analogy of mountains or whatever, what people are welcome to see in there, but it's because on the ends where there's no support for the container, 
And if you want to stay on budget, you can't afford another structure. So you automatically step up or down, depending on how you look at that. So it's a very sort of a rational um, sort of, you know, perceiving but, that. Yeah, but let's, let's talk know, about the design itself. It was a pyramid. It's, um, it's got significance uh, historically. Um, it's, it's baked into, um, you know, global civilization, the, the experience of humankind. Uh, there's something yeah, about yeah. a triangle, a pyramid. It gives you strength. It gives you weight. Uh, gives you, you know, stability and longevity, doesn't it? I mean, it has it has a symbolism about it beyond just the efficiency. Am I right? No, it certainly has. But again, different than in the Beaux Arts BS. That's not the beginning. That's one of the interpretations, and that's like in the tradition of true modernism, just like the Gala Hilton. You can see in it like, you know, some kind of plan because there is like these branches sticking out, you know, and things like that. But uh, you can also see it as a dry cut as its architect Ron Lindgren likes to call it structural expressionism. So it really depends on what you want to see in there. And, and that's basically what, what, what it will become. Um, next, next slide, please, here. Um, because we want to share again the development. This is what you were talking about. This is this is not homified, this is not beautified yet, but that's the space you get. And as you said, if you pick up a couple more bucks, you can make it yours, right? You can make it personal, right? You can personalize it. And, and that's, I think we agree, that's what human nature wants and needs, right? Well, but there's something the about slide, in the investment, the investment by mm -hmm. the individual who lives there. If you give him something that's complete, if you give him something that's complete, um, the, the problem is he's not personally invested or she, but if you give him something where he's going to, he's got to put the, the wall surfaces on the, uh, the, the wall coverings on, if you give him something where he can, he can hang something, he can fix something, he can personalize something, then he's invested. And now all of a sudden it's not somebody else's house, it's his house. And I think the concept is exactly right. You give him a, uh, I don't want to say a shell, but something that yeah. needs a little more and you let him do yeah, yeah. a little more. Yeah, no, and, and also like next slide here, in this sort of flexible and adaptable system, you can also cut out more of the other container, container side and then you can create a larger unit, right? Because we might end up, you know, all these people in the kind of lower paying job areas, they're losing their jobs now they might be families, right? And they might be Ohana, as we call them on the island. So you can accommodate that as well. So it's a very flexible system. It's not that you stuff people in boxes, which you actually do in the conventional affordable housing where you stack. It's one of the same unit that's repeated over and over again. And you're like that chicken in that, in that crate, right? And here, although it looks more sort of rigid, um, but it's actually softer on the inside than, than these conventional units, right? Let's and you change it? Is, it? is it modular? Is it modular? Mark? It is can modular, you change it yeah. Back? So if I don't like the way I cut it, I can yeah. reorganize it again. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the class that this comes out of is called tree architecture. I call it like that. You know, first I wanted to call it because all we need is in Hawaii is a roof, so I wanted to call it roofy texture, but then uh, it's a night class, so I was taught that might be misunderstood. So I call it tree texture because the tree is the thing that's most comfortable to be under in our very privilegedly mild tropics, right? You feel that's all you need, and so that's a product out of it. And just like nature, it is adaptable, and just like a hedge, you can cut a hedge, you know, keep it short, you can let it grow. So this thing is organic, again, in, in, in a conceptual way, not in an aesthetic way. Next slide, although we get to some organic aspects of it too. Next slide. This is how we probably, so we're facing when you age opens up again. This is what I've always been teaching outdoors. This is a Vladimir Asipov Saunders Hall, which houses the Department of Urban and Regional Planning here. And we were doing these mass studies here to get a feel for it, literally and figuratively speaking, how these would stack. And so this is the crew here, the team that was doing that. Next slide. And this is sort of, 
you know, what we came up with as sort of the composition. And again, you, you feel like this is a natural way of going, you know, stratospheric the containers. And next slide. Wait, wait, be, before you go to the next slide though, Martin, um, you know, yeah. you've, got, you've got a number of pictures showing the, the three, um, you know, pyramid shapes, uh, triangular shapes, all in a row, all in a row, um, and touching each other. And I'm wondering if, uh, if that's part of the concept that you've come up with, or is it possible, and, and to me, this would be attractive, is to have them in some other arrangement uh, where they're not just all in a row. All in a row sounds so linear. Um, can, can we do it in some other way? Would that be better? Could it be better? You can. You will see at the very end, we actually proposed just one pyramid, but there, there you can configure them in a way, you know, they can. One of the reasons, again, as you were calling, you know, in world architecture, the pyramid or the ziggurat is one of the archetypes. And it is like that also because it's the most rigid configuration that you can imagine. You're wider at the base and you're thinner at the top. So this is almost ideally showing how gravity flows makes it very sturdy because we're, we're now in a, a COVID chaos, right? We are in racial riots. We're in economical exodus and just thought, wait for the hurricane season to kick in, which it just did. So we might see the next thing coming, right? Which is nature's forces fighting back. And, and this, is, this is a very resilient way of, of building. So people don't only have feel comfortable because of the space, but also because they are pretty well protected from the from the elements. Mm. Let's go to the next slide, because we then had to look in how so we detail them. So containers have doors on one side. We're thinking we leave the doors on and can use them uh, if we put them on the east or the west and we turn them. Uh, they could be shading devices and they could also carry additional outdoor space, which we call a nine. Uh, next slide is the other side would need some kind of access to the unit. So some kind of vertical circulation. So we're thinking to kind of pull out some kind of system that allows us to travel vertically and then potentially um, uh, using vegetation as a shading uh, for if it would be the west uh, elevation or the east elevation. Next slide. You know, I, uh, we, we discussed that the last time, and um, okay. uh, you, had, you had a kind of a funicular, funiculi kind of affair, you know, sort of a 45-degree uh, rail we, elevator. We, we get to this now again. I keep bugging you and poking and provoking you with that. But, but see I, I, wanna, I just want to add, looking at that last slide, previous slide, yeah. it struck me that you could put yeah. containers on one side. See the row of containers closest to the camera here? You could yeah. make those. You could make those containers into a a passageway for a stairway. Now, exactly. of course, the ADA is going to require more than just a yeah, stairway. Yeah, yeah. But mm -hmm. but if you mm -hmm. wanted to have a stairway, and I think most people would like to have a stairway, um, you could you You're could right build on. a stairway very neatly, very aesthetically, very effectively using one one uh, right. one line of yeah. these containers on the side. No, perfectly, and that's where they would go exactly. And it's this beautiful, basically, you know, um, ascending and descending that, you know, you feel you're, you're stratosphere in yourself. You're getting higher and higher in elevation and it's outdoors and you catch the breeze. You don't catch the bug. These are all things, you know, that we have to address in, in architecture uh, more than ever. So go to the next slide. And this is exactly kind of the situation that you then would see on the right side is this corridor on the left side, which we, uh, with our horticulture team members said, this would be the, the growing terraces, almost like, uh, again, not literally, but figuratively speaking, the tarot terraces, or one of our team members twice from Vietnam, he said, this is how we grow rice. So in the world, and wine grows on, on bluffs, even here in Germany. So that's a very uh, internationally known system, how we can grow. And that's another thing, right? Cost of housing is one thing, but cost of food is the other thing that is a burden to people. So because what we want to create is sort of worry-free housing, right? Where people don't get burdened with, with a mortgage for the rest of their life, which ties them down, right? This is, this is not 
it's not paradise, right? It's slavery of capitalism, if you want. So what you do to people conventionally, and we want to change that. Well, returning to the, um, you know, the practical of it, uh, if you give me a, an area where I can grow some food, that is a real tremendous benefit. And a lot of people should and would, but you have to secure it. You have to make it so that, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the one with the access, not everybody else. How do you do that? Is that happening in this uh, design we're looking at now? It is, and let's move on because that's gonna be addressed in the next couple of impressions here. This is this uh, sort of supposedly West facade. And you're, there's something interesting when you, uh, there's actually a, a project I send you, uh, we have to share with the audience in Dusseldorf here in Germany, a, a building that is entirely covered it's by Christoph Ingenhoff. And then we had Ulf Meyer who worked for him in, in the show in the old urban transcendence days. And so what's, what's interesting with green is if you make the green essential, so people need, need it for eating, they also need it for stay cool in their space. They will keep it intact, right? They will water it. They will take care of it because it takes care of them. I, I think it's that easy, at least in theory, and we should prove it in, in, in reality, right? <laughs> uh, this, next is, this is not so much architectural as the, the human experiment. <laughs> it is, yeah. Next slide. So this is going to be uh, the, the, where the planters are, they're elevated, so even people on wheelchairs or older people, you know, can, can do their gardening in there. Uh, next slide. And, and this is, again, the, uh, we have a young, the youngest team member is, is my partner, Suzanne, teenager, Semi. And Semi, as you see at the bottom right, we did a show when I was, we were in, in Zurich. And he's, uh, as his generation, is very interested in the exclusive as they're taking pictures of the Lamborghinos or the Ferraris there in, in Zurich. But he now immediately qualified himself being an expert team member in the inclusive as well, because we were thinking about how in the world do we do the circulation in an equally efficient and effective way using a system that's usually, you know, something you want to be used for architecture. He immediately said, you know, construction scaffolding, why don't you use that? So we, you know, we picked up on that idea. The middle picture on the right is a, is a, is a project by a Dutch firm, MBRDB, who did a spectacular staircase in Rotterdam that goes up to the roof of a, of a historic building. And it's, it's a very catchy, as you said, you got to make it sexy, right? Otherwise, you know, it doesn't fly. So that's, that's a good precedent for that. Next slide. And, and this, is the, uh, this is the other side. This is the Southern side. And again, um, energy creation or generation is, is the iffiest point, especially if you're on a budget. So if, as of now, we propose photovoltaics knowing they're gonna need an initial investment, but that's where they would be optimally. They would both create the balustrade and be at the same time the generator for the electricity you need, which is, however, you know, uh, keeping consumption down because the, the major consumer air conditioning, you, you have cut out because the whole thing is easy breathe. Next slide. You know, Martin, what, what strikes me is that, um, not, not to say that every condominium in Hawaii has common, common amenities, you know, uh, like yeah. a meeting room, uh, who knows, a ping pong mm -hmm. room, uh, a yeah. lounge, anything, a lobby. Um, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think it, it does, it, it is an enhancement to any project to have at least something like that. Does this design yeah. have anything like that? You're right on, you see it on this side. It's actually where uh, either the stairs would be on the, or on the other side. Again, usually it's a luxury amenity, right? It means common space, it means, you know, more investment. But here it's just, it's just $3,000 more because that's what the container costs that's adjacent to it and would host it. So you can, you can actually accomplish that and achieve that in a very cheap way. We're really trying, here we show, we are really trying to have every component of the project being within the philosophy of repurposing, reusing. And here we know that the fishing industry uh, has to switch back to biodegradable fisher nets because all these beautiful sea live as a poor turtle here gets caught in the plastic ones. So then we can get that plastic ones and basically make the, 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 the bellow straight infill 
cover that entirely with fissure net, with reused fissure net, and that's all we need. And then the vines or the vegetation can grow up on it. Uh, next slide. So this is, uh, we're almost at the end, but this one here is most compelling. One of our team members, um, basically Keola is currently uh, hold, um, uh, taking care of the Charlot house, which we as a school of architecture take care of, which um, was built by um, Pete Wimberley for the artist Charlot. And so he walks by uh, the exclusive Kailua beachfront or bicycles by when he goes to get food at the uh, Kahala Mall. And so he said, you know, let's let's basically hijack, let's annex one of these uh, one of these lots, which sounds highly radical, revolutionary, socialist, but not so much because we're indicating here this could be like a flash mob event because the containers, because of the modularity, they only need like a day or two to basically come together, and they only need the same time to go away if they would have. So maybe we find an owner who has a lot and you know hasn't yet decided how to develop it. He lets us be there for that little while. And as you point out, we make it look good and feel good and, and work well, and then it will actually help his lot, right? And the appreciation of his lot. And yeah, well, so if it works, he's more likely to let you keep it there longer, isn't it? Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. you want to not yeah. only impress your, your uh, residents, you want to impress the mm -hmm. landlord where he feels this mm -hmm. is a, you know, uh, a positive uh, aspect of, yeah, yeah. Uh, of the program. Exactly. And let's go to the last slide, which it has to be because we're at the end of the show. But uh, I, I want to thank um, the team, which we're listing there at the top of the screen. Um, I also want to thank the jury, which you have been part of, and um, uh, Bandit Kanistikan has been as well, and Bill Chapman has been part of that, and Tropica Rockwood. And we're actually going to push the project to the to the next level in the fall in the studio, where we call it Faveaing, and it's it's again, you know, it's um, I never wanted to think about suburbia, but people do it anyway if Martin likes it or not. So we will go out there and, and suggest and propose a, a better uh, better out west there, better couple lay. You know, does couple lay really have to be that sort of suburban American track home? tragedy or, or could it be better and that's where we're basically investigating it and so we we keep you posted on that jay and, well i think uh, you're going to take it further martin there are a lot of issues uh, not necessarily all architectural issues um, but there are issues about ownership about leasing yeah. uh, about um, you know the special arrangement with the landlord um there's yeah. there's lots of uh, financing um, and, uh, you know, I would say that it, you could really get traction on this as, as a real project beyond just conceptual and have it work in Hawaii and therefore, uh, you know, be a, be a symbol to other places. So carry mm -hmm. on, will you? I will. I promise I will pass on the encouragement to the team and that will fuel us. So thank you, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're at the end of the show. See you all next week for another episode of Human Human Architecture. We're going to have another emerging talent, uh, Kelly Keanu, and the title of the show will be uh, Coco Housing No Nuts. And you will be surprised what, what he's suggesting, something equally uh, surprising to say the least. And until then, I stay all safe and sound and tropically exotic. Bye bye. Thank you.